Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you how to compression test in the 9D BMW. This car has about 200,000 miles on it and I've never done a compression test. Let's see what we get today. I'm doing this test cold. The car is stone cold at this point. It's been sitting for two days. Of course, the first step is to get the engine cover off. Let's pull these coil packs out. Next up, the spark plugs. Now I'm threading in the hose, see if it's the right fitting. I'm just using one of the supplied adapters to make sure it fits. So the reason why you want to do this stone cold is it's a little more telling. You may get lower compression numbers when the car is not fully warmed up. Now a healthy motor may actually provide the same type of compression cold or warm. So it's kind of more telling to do it cold if possible, even if you see a bump up hot. So this is stone cold right now. We're going to go pull the fuel pump fuse so that we can actually disable the fuel pump now. In your glove box, remove this cover. You'll see which one I'm going after here. As you saw. I'm going to connect a battery charger just to make sure the car has enough juice while we're doing this. Now I'm going to crank the car. You got to hold the gas pedal down all the way to open up the throttle and you got to crank it uh, about six times. Count for six pulses and let's see where we end up. It looks to be 190. So 190 on a stone cold engine, pretty crazy. But my battery is weak, unfortunately. I gotta let it charge up, but it's still able to get through the seven pulses or so, six or seven. Maybe we'll just count it at where it was on six. I'll have to review the footage. So what I'm hoping for is I get a consistent amount of compression across the board. If I have a problem, uh, I may have low compression on cylinder six. So this compression tester was only uh, $30. I'll put a link in the description if you guys are interested. It actually reads well. Let's try cylinder two now. That one's close to 180. I'd say 178 or 180 and the other one was 188 or 190. Cylinder three. About exactly the same, 178 or 180. Cylinder four. Right about the same, 178 or 180 again. There you go, 180. Guys, we're about to find out if you're going to be seeing a build series on this car where I take the whole cylinder head off or change the whole motor if I'm getting my misfires because cylinder six has low compression. But I don't know. I feel like it doesn't. It's not my daily anymore, so I won't be devastated if it is low. All right, fingers crossed. I can hear it anyway. You can kind of just tell how tight the pulses are, you can feel it in your seat. 178. So let's test number one again because they were within two PSI of each other, which is awesome. But let's test number one again. Here's cylinder one again, just in case that was an anomaly given this is the first time I've ever used this compression gauge. That first reading was a bit of an anomaly. Maybe there was some excess fuel that kind of sat on the piston or was sprayed in because I didn't actually drain the injectors out. 
All right, so I think we read high on cylinder one the first go around because I didn't actually disconnect the fuel pump fuse and let the car stall out. So maybe there was some excess fuel pressure in there or fuel vapor that was interfering with our compression readings. So 178 to 180 PSI across the board on a stone cold N54 with 194,000 miles on it. Pretty awesome. This motor's tight. From what I can tell, those are the same readings as any good healthy motor. Oil's always been changed on this car. It's been well maintained. Um, and if you look inside that valve cover, it's crystal clean. It really uh, pulls hard and feels good, makes good power for the amount of uh, boost it's running, etc. So it really isn't a tired motor, believe it or not. I'm really happy with that. But my cylinder six is good. I don't have low compression. That's not my misfire. But anyway, you guys know what to expect. I think uh, some people see readings between 160 and uh, 175, 180 on the high side, 185, 190 on the real high side. But wow, I'm pretty impressed. For any of my usual subscribers, did you catch a video where I said my BMW may not be reliable, but it'll outlast your Toyota? 200,000 miles nearly, and this motor is an absolute tank. So this helps explain why this motor feels so smooth. It idles so smooth that you can barely feel it. The B58 in my uh, M340i doesn't idle any smoother than this. So the car is running right now. I just want to show you guys a quick uh, rough running test in IMPA. I did check with ISTA to see if there was a version of that available, but it wasn't an option. So it seems like IMPA is going to be our best bet. As you can see, it's idling nice and smooth. So this would be a good indicator if all your cylinders are contributing evenly, if those numbers are holding pretty true to each other. As you can see, they're all contributing just about equally. It's looking really good. So there's no major deviation. That would kind of tell you that all the compression is within a few PSI of each other. Something that you can try basically load up IMPA and see if it looks like this or not to see if your motor's healthy. So you can basically load up IMPA and see if these values look kind of like this. This is a healthy running motor. And if so, then you're in good shape. You may not even have to look into your compression unless you're just curious to see if it's making good high compression. But in terms of even compression, you can use this. So I did some research. It seems like 170 to 180 PSI is normal for one of these motors or actually as good as you can expect and you want it to be within a few PSI of each cylinder, ideally to have it be balanced and to show health. So really having around 178 to 180 PSI across all six is as good as you can ever expect. This motor has nearly 200,000 miles on it. It just goes to show that with regular maintenance, these motors can last a very long time. It still has tons and tons of life left in it based on the numbers we got today. It's making as much power as it could at a given PSI of boost pressure. Now, quick tip for anybody that's following along, make sure that you remove the fuse, start the car up, let it stall out on the remaining fuel in the rail before you go ahead and attempt to compression test because otherwise, if you have residual fuel in the rail, it'll bump your compression numbers up as you saw on cylinder one in the beginning. But once uh, we let all that excess fuel out of that one cylinder, we were good. We had 180 on that one. so. Really, you're gonna get falsely high values if you have any fuel vapor being sprayed inside. Keep that in mind. So that's gonna conclude this video showing you how to compression test one of these motors and also how to rough test or verify via ISTA if you actually have an issue that's worth investigating. If this is the first video you're catching on mine, consider subscribing. I do upload regularly. Thanks for watching.